Chapter 3. Mia. Bestie, just stopping by to see how it went with the... Uh... uh. Josie calls out as she hears steps by the door. Hi there. I'm Marco. New to the neighborhood. Mia was just... Uh, welcoming me. He shakes Josie's hand and takes a wide sidestep out of her way. Bye, Mia. Thanks again. Marco says before he jogs off. Well, that was awkward. Josie almost blew my cover of burning lavender, but railed back her big mouth just in time. Gotta love her. She knew how hard the last year has been after my breakup with Charlie. I wasn't one to dabble with candle magic lightly, but I hated how I still thought of him on his birthday today, so I was ready to try anything. Even after a breakup spell and lots and lots of mugwort for healing and lucid dreaming. Josie leans against my door jam watching Marco run away. Josie, get in here! Your breakup spell worked real quick, I see. Huh? You burn Charlie's picture, a little bit of witchy mugwort magically known to offer protection and offer lucid dreaming, and suddenly you're welcoming Marco to town. Well played, universe. Well played. She sashays past me, kicking her flip-flops to the side and slow claps her way to the sofa. Tell me everything. The candle was beautiful, and the mugwort was smoking like crazy. I think the silk tie really added to the smoke, too, I explain. How much of the dried herb did you burn? All of it. All of it, she laughs. You've never been one for instructions. It says to burn one spray, girl. Of course an entire bag of an herb like mugwort is gonna smoke like crazy. How do you feel? I was a little lightheaded right after, but get this. I was smoking so much that my new neighbor Marco jumped over my fence because he was worried my house was on fire. She leans in closer and staples her fingers together, saying, More details, please? A Apparently, Marco was jogging when he saw the smoke and heard me cursing on my way to the hose. He's a firefighter. Of course he is, Josie inserts. Anyways, so of course he was worried and sprang into action. Scared the shit out of me because one second I was alone and the next I've got this huge dude in my backyard. How huge was he? Josie says, amused with herself. She truly has the humor of a college boy. I laugh at her smugness because even I can't deny how well I set that up. So, sexy fireman lumbers into your yard to save you. Then what'd you do? Josie prompts. This woman does not need saving, my dear. It's not two generations ago. We're not that small of a town. Yes, yes, I know. A girl can act out fantasies if she wants to. Just spill the tea, woman. I'm bent over laughing. This is so ridiculous. Okay, so he came to help you out. Sounds hot as hell. What did you do? Josie asks again. I sprayed him with my hose. Stranger danger, chica. Come on now. Josie chokes on the calamansi iced tea she walked in with. Only you would receive a hot-ass fireman delivered to you after a breakup candle and go directly to scare him off. Fuck Charlie, she says, damning my ex. Strike that. Fuck this Marco guy, she laughs. I'm laughing with her over the absolute absurdity of this afternoon, but inside, I wholeheartedly agree to her advice. But here's the thing. He liked it. I think he did, at least. He caught me so off guard, I was just as lovingly cutting with my words as I am with you, and I didn't feel judged. Josie leans over and hugs me tightly. Of course you shouldn't feel judged. You are whole and holy. Charlie was an idiot. Whether it's Marco or anyone else, you deserve to be adored. You're magic. I love you, Josie says. And... He may welcome your edge, but more importantly, it sounds like you like dishing it too. Very unlike you. Or maybe 
it's a new phase for you? Lean into it, Mama. See how it feels. Josie winks and opens a bag of shrimp chips to share. I love that brand. Ooh, speaking of shrimp chips, we are having a family picnic next weekend. A park potluck for lunch. Want to come with, I ask? I love your family. Of course I'll be there. What can I bring? Josie asks. You know them. They won't ask you to bring anything, but they won't turn down any gifts either. How about some fresh flowers from your shop? They'd like that. White hydrangeas are in season. I can make a few centerpieces. They'd go great with the amethyst towers I just received at my store. What do you think about a crystal-inspired bouquet? Combine your flowers and some of my crystals as a part of the arrangement so they have something for now and something for later, I say. Let's try it. We can test it at the party and see what they think. I love it. I'll come by with some ideas this week. I love Josie. Everything is a good idea with her, and she never turns down something that might initially seem out of place. Living nearby, my bestie pops over more days than not. She's aggressive in the best way possible. The absolute epitome of nothing ventured, nothing gained. Sure, a lot has blown up in her face, but she'd say it's always worth trying. There's always someone in town that's annoyed with her because they just don't get her like I do. But I think it's because she wears her heart on her sleeve and says the truth. Absolutely zero filter. The opposite of me. I'm running ideas through so many filters that I find myself mute when I've got a fire within me. I have been known to spend many a late night replaying frustrating conversations in my head while swapping profanities in for the polite apologies I actually said. I loathe that timid side of myself, and I'm ready to step into a new phase. Why not? Josie's right. I'll lean into it and try it out on Marco. Show him who I'm really meant to be. He doesn't have to meet introverted me. He can welcome the brazen side, or I don't want him. It's time to do things a new way. A few days later, we carpool to the party, and I see my family gathered as I park my car. Even from afar, I can tell everyone is gathered around the food like normal. They're all crowding around like the hot lumpia and mac and cheese balls were just pulled out of the fryer. We better hurry up. Nothing makes my family move like fresh food. That must be why they're all around the table already, I tell Josie. Pop the trunk and I'll get my vases, she said. The centerpieces turned out so lovely. Hydrangeas in short clear cube vases with banana leaves wrapped around the inside. We added crystal pyramids at the end of thin rods, so they're peeking through the hydrangea blossoms. They reflect the light as a nice shimmer around the truck. A second style has the same vase of hydrangeas, but instead of leaves wrapped around the inside, there's a layer of water-safe crystals at the bottom. They're stunning. I wonder which my family will gravitate towards. We rush over, and I playfully push through the layers of family standing around to grab my share, but realize there's no food out yet. It's an empty table. Jeez, Mia. That hungry, huh? My cousin Jesse laughs at me. I thought I was late for the lumpia. Looking around our circle, I see we have additions to the group. If it's not food getting my family to move, it's guests. The more the merrier. We love greeting people and welcoming them into the fold. Like adding more vanilla to any baked good. I can never get enough. Nathan has been Jesse's best friend since he joined the team last season. He's his junior at the firehouse and the most frat-like of the bunch. Darren is the youngest in the group, considerate and mild-tempered. After years of hanging out with all of them, I've never seen Darren fully let go. We have half a table of firemen, but only one sticks out. My Dita Bet says, Mia, meet Marco. He's new to town and is at the firehouse with Jesse. He lives by you. He's single, Anak. Josie does a spit take at the same time Nathan does. Gross, you two, I say laughing at their shared spill. Those two are both blunt and cackling at the same jokes. Too bad they can't stand each other. They wipe up the mess over a shared glare. 
Tita Pet is my godmother and Jesse's mom. Jesse's the only one that knows about my run-in with Marco the other day, and I know he's caught between the truth of our meeting and this desperate setup. He's bug-eyed, waiting to follow my lead. We grew up together, and he's way beyond my relative. He's my best friend. He's my true ride-or-die. But that also puts him in the best position to crack the worst jokes at my expense. Are you single, Mia? Jesse prods. Marco has been smiling and kindly watching the conversation ping-pong the whole time, but even I can see his heightened interest badly hidden behind a slow sip of beer. His fingers may be nursing that bottle, but his eyes are wide on me. Before I can answer, Tita Bed cuts in. You know she is, Anak. That good-for-nothing Charlie didn't know what he had. He never could let Mia totally in with him and his kid. He has wasted too much time on him. Cute kid, though. I'm blushing. Not from feeling appreciated, but from the embarrassment of the semi-coated anti-compliments always being laced with a jab. Can I get you a drink, Mia? Thanks, Marco. I'm smiling and nodding because I'd rather get backhandedly talked to by my family than be known for back-talking to an elder. That'd be the worst of the two by far. Mia, actually, come on over. Lots of options in the cooler. Marco calls out. Yeah, get a drink with him, Anak. Tita Pet encourages. I walk to the next set of picnic tables that have the coolers beneath them and fish my hand inside only to find nothing but Coronas. I only see Coronas, I say confused. Yep, I thought you might want an excuse to dip out of whatever that was. Was it that obvious? No, you played the model niece perfectly. I just know how I feel when my family's all ribbing me about the infinite number of ways they find to make me uncomfortable. It was my lifesaver from one second-gen kid to another. <laughs> I think I love you, I say laughing with wide eyes. I'm half joking, but I'm also half serious, and now I'm full on blushing. Make me work for it more than that, he says jokingly nudging me. I will, I say cheersing the top of his bottle. Those flowers you brought were nice. Thanks so much. Josie is the local florist, and... I had this idea to add crystals from my shop to her bouquets, and that's what we came up with so far. We thought we'd test it out on my fam. Wow. I think anyone would love to buy those. They really stand out. I appreciate that. And there's so much more to it, too. Crystals hold different meanings, and their message will add to the significance of the floral arrangement. What do you mean? The white hydrangeas represent abundance and togetherness, and the amethysts represent unity. I love that. There's so much nuance to it, too. What do you mean? Well, flowers and their colors mean different things in different cultures. So you've got to consider all that, too. Like, these white flowers are beautiful, but in Chinese culture, white flowers are only for funerals. On the other hand, in my Mexican culture, we only use marigolds to honor our ancestors. I bet Josie's got a handle on all that already. Wow. There's so much more to Marco than I thought. Every time I get him alone, I see another facet to him, and I just want more. I hate to break up whatever's developing over here, but it's all hands on deck to get Lola from the car, Mia, Jesse says. My grandma is 80 years old and still shows up to every party with a full face of makeup. She's the family matriarch and she deserves every gem in her royal crown. Before I can stand up, Marco shoots up and inserts himself. I can do it. Let me help. He's so eager I sit back down and give Jesse the look. The look that says, that's so sweet, but you... Better go with him because you know Lola has zero filter for nonsense and charm. Especially if it comes in the package of a hot young man that could add up to heartbreak for a favorite granddaughter. Jesse gives me a simple got it look and they head off together. 
I watch them from afar, and I'm shocked that Marco knows to welcome my grandma by taking her hand to his forehead as a greeting for respect. That's a good start. I don't know what's happening, but they've been there for a good 20 minutes. I sit and watch, trying to lip read for the first time in my life. At some point, Josie sits next to me and opens up a fresh bag of shrimp chips as we try to make sense of their mute conversation. I saw you eyeing my granddaughter over there, young man, Josie says in an accented high voice. Apparently, Lola sounds like a G.I. Joe from the Philippines. Interesting take, but pretty aggressive, Josie. Ain't the matriarch by going easy on everyone. True. True. I think I love her, ma'am, Josie says with a slightly lower voice for Marco. Get your head out of your pants. I don't know you, young man, Josie says, switching to my Lola. I'm a fireman. I can jump a ten-foot fence to get to her, and I promise to give you lots of grandkids. That's the point where Lola actually smiles and puts up her hand to pull him closer and kiss him on the cheek before being rolled across the lawn in her wheelchair. Oh shit, I might have actually been right with that last one. I throw a shrimp chip at her head and smile to myself. Trailing behind is Jesse with two thumbs up and I think to myself, I may really love this boy. <laughs>